you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Posture Screen, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Moguls, Fit to Lift, Five Star Management, Rhino Coaching, Cairo Health USA, Local Gold, The Goodman Factor, McCaffrey Clinical Mentoring, Go Get Talks, Cairo Thin, Unmarket Your Practice, and Free My Pain Now with Dr. Matt DeDuro. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 133 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I'm your co-host Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had an opportunity to interview Dr. Joe Borio. If you want the real passion and story of chiropractic, stay tuned. We are live today with Dr. Joe Borio. This is episode 133 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. It's such an honor to have you today. And uh, before we jump into this episode, I uh, just want to welcome you to the show. And uh, first question we have for you, Dr. Joe, is tell us your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor. Yeah, so imagine this. You're, you're, you have a newborn child who struggles to be healthy um, and has some neurologic challenges that, that are kind of ill-defined. Uh, starts to developing some seizure activity um, that becomes more prominent as a period of time passes. Um, also tends to be a sickly kid who is getting sicker. So, you know, the double ear infection, the, the strep throat. Um, a kid, as he gets a little older, um, tends to be in a lot of pain uh, and um, has challenges um, putting things in their mouth. Um, the, the texture and feel of how things taste and feel, uh, and um, started to do a lot of self-stimulation stuff, so banging his head against the wall and kind of scratching and biting and that type of stuff, and um, it had got progressively worse, and, um, and the family then um, reaches out to multiple medical experts with really no lasting benefit and um through the assistance of a neighbor they um suggest going to a chiropractor the parents do that and uh within a matter of a few moments of the initial history the doctor asks about the child's birth and the mother gets emotional doctor says why and and she says you know he was 11 pounds when he was born they used forceps for 30 minutes and he's never been right other than my three other children. He just never had interesting use of a spark was the word my mom would use. You know, he didn't have a spark. He didn't have that same light. He didn't have that same coloring, that same vibrance that the rest of my family had. And uh, the doctor took an x-ray, uh, Dr. Bill Fazer out of North Syracuse, took an x-ray of my neck, started to adjust me. And within about six months of being under care, my mother describes it as I was sitting in the corner with my, playing with my brother and two sisters, and she said, Joey had a spark about him. He had a, a light about him that he never had. And um, that's my chiropractic story. It literally changed my life. I got off all medication, uh, became, you know, some may argue this, but I became normal. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and my mother was so moved by what it did for me as being sick my mother literally said you know if it's that good for joey who was sick imagine how good it would be for us all to be under care even though dr thaser i'm sure talked about it, it was my mother really who said hey we all need to go because it's really good for us to go so from being a very young boy up and through my life i um I uh, was under chiropractic care. Uh, I got to the point when I was in uh, uh, my teens. My dad runs an Italian restaurant, a really big restaurant called Borio's Restaurant. And my brother, he left it. He wanted to leave it to us just like his parents left it to him. Uh, and my brothers wanted to take it over, and I did. And my parents said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a chiropractor. I want to do what uh, Dr. Thaser did for me. I want to be able to do that for other people. So, um, so I became a chiropractor in 1990. I graduated National College of Chiropractic and um, really struggled hard those first couple of years. 
And uh, I uh, met Reggie Gold at a coaching event down in uh, Coslo Management down in New York City. I was very reluctant for, to get a coach or a mentor. I looked at it as a failure. I looked, uh, it was frowned on at National College, you know, very medical oriented school. Good people, but, you know, mis, misguided. And, um, and I met Reggie down there at this event and just blew my mind. And I didn't really know what he was talking about, but I was like, that's what I think I went to school for. But I went in more as a chiropractor than I came out and uh, started following Reggie, hired him as my coach. I worked with Reggie, Sigafoos, Fred Barge, um, and, you know, Sid Williams, and, uh, you know, through DE and met those years way back. And uh, I was on a phone call with uh, Sigafoos every week, every month, every couple of weeks for probably two years. Um, I was a client of his and, uh, and I worked with a lot of other mentors. So through the, through their leadership and, uh, in coaching, um, I was able to grow, uh, just an unbelievably high volume, successful practice that, uh, just blew my mind. And, uh, and now I became, you know, I wanted to do what Reggie did for me for other people. So, uh, uh so that's why I got into coaching. So. So how long have you been practicing and what would you say makes you unique in the chiropractic profession? Are you doing anything different that stands out from other practitioners? Um, yeah, I've been 29 years of practice. Can't even believe I say that word. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Or something. I don't know if it's congratulations. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, what am I doing different? I, I, you know, I guess, the the two points because you would ask me hey listen what are some mantras what are some things there's so many that go through my head because you 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 go to the well of what you need in the moment you know and those moments are different sometimes right that needs to stoke you move you fire you up um one of the things it's on my desk every morning that i look at it obviously and throughout the day one is they never get it so I think what makes me unique is in one way that I still practice, well, number one, as a coach. So I'm one of the few that still are out there banging it. And then number two, I look at my computer and on the bottom it says they never get it. I think the mistake that the profession makes is whether you do a class workshop orientation, whether you present something with somebody, we tend to think even if they sign on a care plan or commit to something, we tend to think that they get it. And then the biggest mistake is the moment you think they get it, you stop trying to get them to get it, which means they get diluted and they drop out of care. So anybody practicing says, geez, I can't believe Bob dropped out of care. I thought he really got it. We stop trying to get them to get it because the minute they leave your office, it's delusion allopathic gland. And so we forget that we're in this bubble of our practice and everything seems universal, innate, you know, really connected, natural. You got this great community you're building in your practice. But as soon as they get out, they get misguided. They're, they're, they're misinformed. And they have been for 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years when they first come in your office. So, so knowing that, I think if you start every day with the position that no one gets it, even the person in your office who you think really gets it, if I still start my relationship with him every day that he doesn't get it, then I'm not going to talk about the ball game and I'm not going to talk about the grass and the weather and the stupid shit that everybody talks about. I'm going to talk about chiropractic. So I'm going to say, hey, listen, you know, did you read this? Did you hear this? That was a great adjustment. You know, that goes here, whatever. So I'm constantly in a position of flux to know that they never get it. I'm always working towards them getting it. And even the ones that get it, I'm going to work on them to try to get it more. So, Well, a couple of things you said there, Dr. Joe, is uh, I was very reluctant to getting a coach as well. And now I have two coaches. And the last time I had a coach was in college soccer when in 2002. So I was like trying to do it all on my own. And I thought I was like, you know, making like strides and doing things the right way. But I didn't realize what I didn't know. And Correct. Something I realized over this past weekend, we were in Toronto at a mastermind event with my coach. And, uh, 
one of the things I took away from that was uh, give people what they want and sell them what they need. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, I worked in an office for six years and during that, that segment, Joe, I, I was always like, well, I, I'll talk to somebody about the weather. I'll talk to somebody about the Cubs. I'll talk to somebody about fantasy football. And then slowly as I learned, uh, the, the primary doctor did not appreciate that. <laughs> and he's like, can you just kind of like, you know, curb that conversation back to care? Can you curb that conversation back to chiropractic? Because honestly, I could have talked to like the guy that was like in there that was like into baseball. I could have talked to him for 30 straight minutes while I was working. And sure. he's like, you know, let's just kind of focus that conversation back to why they come in to see us. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate, um, you know, in the, on the coaching end of it. And there's a lot of, you know, certainly there's a lot of uh, coaches, and I say that in a, as a good way, not a bad way, within chiropractic because not everyone's going to resonate with everybody and everyone's got a little different personality, different style. And, and, you know, the teacher shows up when the student's ready, right, as Confucius says. So, so sometimes somebody's maybe not ready for what I have to share yet. Um, but I will say that the, the disappointment is that we in chiropractic, I think we are, we're weakened, we're apathetic, we're, we have a greater degree of insecurity, we have a greater degree of, uh, of coveting, of, of protecting ourselves to a certain degree. So we often look at coaching as a weakness, uh, as a somebody, hey, you couldn't figure it out on your own. And it's interesting with that because uh, and it's unfortunate because it's hurt the profession because you would never run a football team without a coach. You'd never run, be a CEO of a great company without a coach. Like no one works without a consultant or a coach. And yet, unfortunately, more so I see in chiropractic, it's frowned on or looked on as, as a negative too far often. And, uh, and un unfortunately, there's so many great coaches out there that are that are so powerful to help lead you. You find somebody who resonates with you. Boy, I'll tell you, like you said, you don't know what you don't know, Jim. And, and too often there's a lot you don't know. And uh, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, why start, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this successfully. Hook up with somebody that runs the type of practice you want to run. And he or she will show you how to, you know, kick ass and, and, and get there a lot faster. So. So do you mind if we get a little more in depth about uh, your coaching program? No, no. Ask me whatever you want. Yeah. What, what's it called? What kind sure. of things do you teach? And is, is it specifically for chiropractors or could other people implement your systems? Sure. So the name of our company is called Cairo Passion. So I had spoken a number of years before I uh, opened up Cairo Passion and everyone said, my God, you're so passionate and you're so engaging. And, you know, I mean, even when I say that, I don't feel like I am, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like I'm passionate, but um, I think that's something that resonated with people. So, um, so that's why we called it Kyra Passion uh, when I started the company. Um, my thought initially was I'll just show people what I do and they'll be able to copy it and then everyone will be able to do what I do. Um, and that was my naive thinking as to what this, how easy this would be. And I realized that everyone comes to the table with so many other challenges. Um, we just did a mastermind in London. Uh, we call it a mastermind retreat. We do it once a year. And uh, we were in the, uh, in the room with about 18 docs. And it was amazing, you know, this private session where you're really driving down deep, finding out what's going on with people, what holds them back, what their influence was, uh, what their challenges were, what are they afraid of. Uh, um, so you realize there's so much more to it. So one, it's, I want to get in shape. Well, you already know how to do push-ups and sit-ups. You follow me? And you already know eating better is good for you. Yet, it's not necessarily the information that's the problem. Because you could Google and YouTube almost anything and still get the information. There's something else out there that prevents you from doing the push-ups and the sit-ups, right? There's something out there that prevents you from doing what you already know. And that's really where coaching is going to benefit you. It's, it's being held accountable. It's having somebody to support and, and uh, talk you off the ledge sometimes, if you will, but support you when you go out to try to do something that's new or different and maybe it doesn't go so well. 
and how to handle it when it does go really well. Uh, the challenges at 100 adjustments a week are a lot different than 100 adjustments a day versus 100 adjustments an hour, right? So knowing how to handle, mitigate, manage, hire, let somebody go, how to market, how to run your business, how to pay your bills, how to become wealthy, like how do you invest your money and, and how do you create a lifestyle for yourself that's wealthy um, so that you can practice every day by choice, not by need or necessity. Um, you know, and then staying philosophically sound with, with the science to back it up, understand the metaphysics of it. So our coaching program basically encompasses all those pillars. Uh, we do a lot of it online because a lot of people want to be able to see it. So I've created a lot of videos where you can literally look, and I mean literally with a camera, you're looking over my shoulder as I do things. So it's easy. Uh, we do weekly webinars, so you're in constant contact. We do private phone calls with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we, and then we do four events throughout the year. The other thing I think that makes our program great uh, is that we have a CA training program that's along with it. Um, we ran a, 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 a volume practice that was, was massive. I mean, literally to the point where you had police officers in the front of my office navigating traffic. So... Um, so, you know, the CAs that were with me at that time are still with me. So they can help educate, teach, uh, elevate your existing CAs as an effort to, um, you know, how to handle missed adjustments, how to handle people that are coming in that have financial challenges, how to inspire moms and dads to bring their kids in. Like they can help your whole staff or program. So, so we offer CA training in, in all of our programs as well. And you know what? A lot of people are in different places. Some, pe some people have financial challenges. Some people have commitment challenges, right? They're, they're, they don't want to commit. A lot of docs don't like contracts, all that other stuff. So we've got a couple of levels of coaching that, that really, I think, fit a lot of people. So you can come in online with less accountability, less commitment, or you can do something at a higher level. We call it the elite program, uh, which isn't for everybody, but for those docs that want to get on a call with me on a regular basis and, and really want to commit, um, that's another great program as well. So, Man, I, I love everything that you're sharing. So many people needed to hear that message. And one of the things I love most about what you're saying is coaching gives us time to talk to somebody that's interested in listening to us. Yes, and yes. Somebody that is interested in our personal success because we can talk to people in passing. We can talk to like, you know, friends and family. And typically when we get on that chiropractic topic, most people are tuned out. And yes. when we, like you said, you know, people never get it. Correct. And when we start talking to like even somebody that gets it and I'm saying, hey, man, I'm going to be traveling to here. And I'm going to be speaking here and we have this person coming up on our show and we're, we scheduled in this many people and we're doing training in this group today. Like most people, they're really excited for like our like little bits of like bumps of growth and achievements. But when you get somebody that you really trust and they want to foster like excellence in you, it's really important to have somebody like, you know, give you their undivided attention and yeah. congratulate you for your small victories and to keep you on uh, your momentums, you know, and I think there's so many times where we start doing momentum and we fall off track and we don't have an accountability partner. Yes. And I, I think what you're doing is so vital to people. And we res, like you said, it's not for everybody, but we do right. resonate with certain people. And when you do resonate with somebody and you find them as somebody as like maybe a confidant or yes. maybe a coach, or you want to share your like quick wins with someone like you're really taking value in that person. And before we started the show, we talked about like how the relationship of what you do outweighs any type of the amount of money that you'll ever gain. As long as you're doing something that fills up your heart and soul, you're going to really appreciate the human connection that you make with people. Yes. That's yeah. really what I catch from you, Joe, is, you know, you said, I studied with Reggie Gold. I studied with Fred Barge. I, I studied under, you know, these great names. And I studied the, the systems that it took me to take myself from this national education, take me to get myself out of my own way, go through these struggles and hardships. And now you can bestow this, this knowledge base and this, this vault of trust to people. And I think so many times people go through this, this chiropractic thing and they just don't know who to go to for, you know, confidence 
They don't know who to go to for a proper system. They don't know who to go to to understand. Like you said, if somebody comes in and they have a hardship for financials, how do you manage that? If you want to get the family under care, how do you do that? If you want to talk somebody, you know, to stay under care, how do you reinforce that consistently? Exactly. Exactly. So the things that you're saying, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in love with your message because I think so many people need to hear what you're saying and you package it the right way that I think that you're going to attract the right type of people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The, the, the challenge we have is the profession, you know, there's so many things and I say it humbly that the professions got wrong, um, that it, it creates a challenge, right? And so then we've got this, we've got this profession that's fractured. And many of docs start school thinking that, you know, and, and naive, I did too, so I'm not pointing a finger, right? You point a finger, you got, you got a few pointing back at you, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, you think you're going to hang a shingle and everyone's going to come in, or you're going to practice your version of, of chiropractic, or um, you think it's going to be easy. You think that all these people are going to come in because you're going to love them up and serve them. So you've got part of the profession that thinks from the service mindset entirely And there's this pride that comes in with like suffering or being a martyr or almost being lack of successful that makes you somebody that's more principled or or focused. And that hurts because, listen, the average person doesn't want to go be a chiropractor and suffer and struggle, right? And then you got the other part of the profession that struggles. And then what they do, and and, uh, again, all good people, nobody's a bad person, but then they struggle because they don't have proper leadership, coaching, mentoring, they don't have protocols, procedures. So then they struggle and they go, you know what, Jesus, I got to pay the bills. I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in weight loss. I'm going to bring in other things within the practice, not because they love that more, they're more passionate, but they're trying to find some ways to bring in some financial means in order for the practice to be successful. And the problem you run into with that is that um, now the, the public has become very confused. So you've got chiropractors doing all types of things. You know, my simple answer is this dentistry is really successful. In fact, dental disease from, I believe it was 1945 up until 2000 had dropped by 98% in the United States, right? Number one, I would never go to my dentist and ask him to look at my knee. <laughs> and the dentist doesn't feel less of a doctor or expert in their field because he or she doesn't know about their knee. So as chiropractors, if we stay within our lane, as BJ taught us, and, and that doesn't mean other, there aren't other values to other things. I'm not saying that. But if we hold our head up, on the expertise and authority and training of, I'm looking to see where your spine's crooked, where it's subluxated. Why? Because it causes deterioration and changes in the neuro, neurologic network of the body, right? Neuro, neurologic communication. If I stay within that lane and that's what I'm going to do and that's where I focus and we do that as a profession, then everyone views chiropractic as what it, what it is. And then all of a sudden the docs that struggle on both sides of the spectrum, they don't have to struggle anymore because the average person is walking in with a sense of clarity going, hey, listen, if I go to an orthodontist, they straighten my teeth. If I go to the chiropractor, he or she takes really good care and straightens my spine. Rather than I go into the chiropractor across the street, I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to put my foot, feet in an ionic foot bath. They're going to do some type of electrical diagnostic for nutrition. Again, I don't say that to to dismiss or disparage the value of those services. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we as a profession now have been branded with this very ill-defined specialty, and then we, we, can't, we can't have a clear message to the world. You know, chiropractic is a requirement and a necessity to have a healthy spine. Just like brushing your teeth is a requirement and a necessity to have healthy teeth. I mean, you know, I always ask people when we do a Monday night, you know, we do a Monday night public talk and I ask people, I say, how long are these meant to last for? And they always say forever. Everyone says forever. Even if they lost them, they know forever. But what's the rule? Only if you what? Take care of them. Take care of them, right? So it's the meant to last forever only if 
you take care of your teeth. So listen, it wasn't like God got your teeth right, but couldn't figure out your gallbladder. You know what I mean? He's not sitting there with Archangel Michael going, Jesus, I got to be honest with you, Mike, the teeth, I got them 110 years. It's freaking awesome. But holy shit, the gallbladder's quitting at 38. The appendix is about 19. Holy shit, the adenoids and tonsils, I'm lucky to get them to last a year. Like, that's not what's happening. We're not taking care of the rest of our body. So using proper communication, using proper analogies, understanding that they never get it, starting from a foundation and premise of they don't get it, we're going to treat them with a lot of respect and bring them to a point of understanding what chiropractic is, is a big part of where we need to go as a profession. And then we got to start loving and respecting each other. We're not all the same people. We're not all coming from, you know, same sex, same, same religious background, same scientific background. My brother and I got into a really bad fight when we were younger. And my dad said, hey, listen, come here. It was during the space program. I'll give you an idea how old I am. Just had his 50th year anniversary. And he said, hey, Tony is an engineer. My brother is engineer minded. He's, he's calculation, analysis. He's cautious. He's very detailed before he leaps. I am the guy that will just jump off the building and figure it out on the way down. There's good and bad to both, right? They're not all good. They're not all bad. So my, bro my dad said, hey, do you know what? My brother named Tony. There's an Italian family for you. So he says, hey, Tony, you're mission control, and your brother's an astronaut. So you know what? You're, you're going to do better together than you'll ever do apart. Because, Tony, if it's up to you, you'll never be satisfied to fire the rocket because you're always calculating analysis paralysis. And Joey, if it's up to you, you'll jump on the rocket and die because you're not concerned about the parameters of the rocket. We gotta look at ourselves as a profession that way. We've got people in our profession that are engineer minded and they're gonna be the evidence based. I need to make sure all this is perfect and then make sure I got every number lined up. That doesn't make them bad people. And then we got a bunch of other people that are like, hell, lay them down and you know, hit them in the ass with a shovel. Doesn't matter as long as you correct the subluxation. You know what? There's truth to that too, because you don't know what innate's going to do to the body after it gets adjusted. And there's truth to the other part where, hey, listen, we should be doing a better job at really assessing the clinical effects of what we do as chiropractors. Nobody's 100% right, nobody's 100% wrong. But we got to start looking at ourselves on the football field sometime and go, holy shit, you know what? You got the same uniform on that I do. We forget that. And if we start remembering that, we start saying, hey, listen, we're all on the same team. We're not all going to agree. Let's argue behind the doors. Let's not spend 30 minutes on Facebook wasting our life beating the shit out of somebody. Let's realize, hey, how can I, true leadership is, how can I lift you up? How can I lend a hand to you? How can we understand each other better? How can we communicate in a way that we both walk away maybe disagreeing to a certain point, but having a much greater degree of appreciation for each other. Uh, I'll tell you, if we could take on some of those things, um, we are going to rock as a profession. If we don't, um, we're not doing so great right now. And uh, as a result, uh, you know, we're going to be, we're going to just continually continue to struggle. So. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Posture Screen, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Moguls, Fit to Lift, Five Star Management, Rhino Coaching, Cairo Health USA, Local Gold, The Goodman Factor, McCaffrey Clinical Mentoring, Go Get Talks, Cairo Thin, Unmarket Your Practice, and Free My Pain Now with Dr. Matt DeDuro. Let's hustle. I got to tell you that astronaut mission control comparison perfectly describes Gemini, which yeah. is we're such a good team. <laughs> right. Because you do better together than you are apart, right? Absolutely. It's so fantastic. There's a great story um, on uh, uh, Ernest and Giulio Gallo had the wine company. So two Italian guys in there very passionate, you know, and they would, they'd yell and they had the 72 hour rule. So anytime they disagreed, as one of the brothers told, tells the story, they'd have to walk away. They weren't allowed to talk about it or talk to each other for three days later, three days later, it was a cool down period. Now they're not mad anymore. And they said 90% of the time when they cooled down and came back to the table, 
they always came up with a better idea than either of them had that they were arguing about. So isn't that all, what a great lesson that is, right? That is cool. Well, if we could do that as chiropractors, woo, take it over, baby. You well, asked me, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're going to say something. No, I was just going to say, Luke and I just went to Toronto and we got a Mustang convertible oh, as a rental car. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't drive as much as possible. Like that's one of my lowest life values is driving. So Luke likes driving. So he counterbalances and does the driving. And uh, Luke likes to drink beer and I don't drink. So one night Luke was like, hey, I think I'm going to go out and have a couple of beers. I'm like, perfect. I'll drive us home. <laughs> and uh, anyways, Luke did not drink beers because I'm like, well, if I'm driving, I'm going to get this Mustang convertible to 100. And <laughs> 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 got it <laughs> and Luke's like you know what I'm just going to go ahead and not drink beer tonight I'm DD I'm DD because we're going 55 miles an hour <laughs> because I'm, like, I'm going to like burn the tires out absolutely this baby <laughs> somebody <laughs> some engineer built this puppy for some speed let's see what this, this baby can do right <laughs> well I mean the way I see it is when we get a fast car that's not on my name not on my credit card. Oh, gotcha. Sure. And when he's actually registered as a driver, I'll let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> That's my rule. <laughs> That's I get it. So there's mission control right there. Yes. So that's the, the symbiosis of a team as well is, you know, I, I'm like the guy that puts my head out and waits for someone to swing. Luke's yeah, like, yeah. would you not just put your head out there? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, so, that's my brother, Tony and Joe. There's no doubt. So. So how, how would the chiropractic profession change or improve if more doctors went through your coaching program? Well, again, uh, if you're looking to, and I, I think a large part of the profession is, not everyone, if you're looking to grow a practice that, that, that's subluxation-based and that you're going to essentially adjust people and you're going to do corrective care to the spine and then you're going to tend after families because chiropractic's good for you. That's one of my big comments. Like, you know, we've spent a long time bashing medicine in an effort to elevate ourselves. And we've, we try to position ourselves opposite of medicine. I think we've had it wrong from the start. I think um, like nutrition doesn't do that. And exercise doesn't do that, right? Fitness clubs don't say join us because medicine's bad and drugs are bad. They say, join us so that you get healthier and you live a better life. I think of chiropractic, number one, just said, hey, wait a minute, stop for a minute. Getting adjusted is good for you. Going to the chiropractor is really good for you. Let me tell you why. And not try to elevate or position it as an alternative. There's no alternative to dentistry. Dentistry is relatively natural, right? There's no drug in a toothbrush. They don't call it an alternative, right? What do they call it? You brush your teeth. Like there isn't an alternative to dentistry. Why are we view, positioning ourselves as an alternative, right? Or we're not the drugless alternative. We're none of that. The gym doesn't apply itself as a drugless alternative to anything. It's just good to go to the gym. It's good to go eat good. And you know what? It's really, it's great for you to get adjusted. In fact, it's a requirement and necessity, just like dentistry. So number one, I would say, if that resonates with you, then boy, you'd love our program. Number two, we're going to teach you how to run uh, more people. We're going to teach you how to be uh, um, more successful in your communication protocols, procedures, business skills, um, as well as um, uh, how to be more financially successful. If we could have two, three, 500, 1,000 practices in chiropractic consulting, practicing how we teach, it's going to do a lot of things. One, it's going to standardize and unify what chiropractors do out in the profession. So I think that eliminates ambiguity within the profession. Number two, it's going to create more success. We got to have more financial success within the profession because we got to give back to the profession financially. We got to give back to organizations and groups, state associations, federal associations and such, uh, as well as global associations. We can't do that if we're struggling. You can do that if you're wealthy and abundant. So, so that's going to make a big difference to help uh, perpetuate the profession. And I think lastly, um, you know, Steve Jobs said 
we, we change people's lives. We just happen to sell computers, right? I look at a chiropractor and saying, hey, you know what? We give you a better life. We just happen to be a coaching company. So I think your life is going to be a lot better um, with a coach and a mentor who has done it, who's still doing it, who loves it, who's in it to win it, and who wants to see chiropractic um, benefit for the sake and the benefits of what chiropractic has to offer for humanity, for the world, for the future generation. Absolutely love what you're saying once again. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, probably your number one fan right now. <laughs> and I, I've never really had a conversation with you before. But I love your analogies. And I, I really pride myself on analogy talk as well. And when you sit here and tell me about like these gyms, they're not worried about like what they're what else someone else is going to or, you know, it's not us against them type thing. And you know what the guys that are running gyms or the gals that are running gyms, they're not saying, Oh, we charge 70 bucks a month. Why is the guy down the street charging $10 a month? Right. right. They're just right. worried about the people that are on their membership right. and Correct. getting good quality services when somebody Correct. pulls up. You know, a gym club is never like, oh, gosh, don't go down to the guy that charges 50 bucks okay. for the right. membership. They're right. like, we charge $70 for our, our health club. These are our amenities that we provide to you. Would you like to become a member? And they're right. like, yeah. I want a personal trainer too. And we also offer nutrition advice. Right. Awesome. I love this type of concept. Well, exactly. the guy down the street charges 20 bucks. And do you know what they don't do? They don't offer nutrition advice and personal training. Right. You come in 24 hours a day and work out. Perfect. Right. So the paradigm is still the same, but you get different suite of services based exactly. on the specialty of that health club. Correct. And not only that, the one gym is in knock and the other gym because that gym went to this school and I went to this school, right? So I'm a better chiropractor because I went to this chiropractic school or I'm a better chiropractor because I use this technique. Like we, I mean, that's got to end yesterday. yesterday. We're killing ourselves. Like, what are we doing? We're so insecure. We're, we're, and I understand why. And we've been beat up and we're so apathetic and we're on the ground sometimes. So we try, you know, to knock somebody else down as our only means to elevate ourselves. When in reality, we are so much better together than we ever would be apart. Mm -hmm. And if we could just, if we can embrace that as a profession and stop tearing each other down, but start working with each other hand to hand, like I said, you change the profession, you change the attitude, you all of a sudden we start, right? I mean, there's some local groups down here, they can't get more than two or three chiropractors to show up. I mean, why? Partly because nobody wants to wear, everybody's practicing on an island, right? Boy, we could change that tomorrow if we could, if we could really, like Mother Teresa said, I don't want to go to an anti-war rally, I want to go to a pre, pro-peace rally. So we need to be pro-chiropractic rallies and uh, bring ourselves together. And, um, you know, I, I see glimpses of that. We just need a lot more of it in our profession. So. Well, you know, Joe, that's one of the things that a lot of the people that have been in the profession for 29 years like yourself say yes to us. Because what we've actually been able to do is tear down these walls of confusion among yeah. different tribes. Like, yeah. like there's no longer a wall between that group and this group because Correct. now we support them. And now yeah. we say there's a disillusionment agreement and you guys didn't yeah. know that it was created. Exactly. Because we said we're inviting you, we're inviting them, we're inviting you, we're inviting them. And there's exactly. a thing that's bigger than what you guys stand for and it's called chiropractic. And it's not your little pool party that no one's invited yeah, to. Exactly. It's, it's the chiropractic profession that we're all a part of. And whether I'm an advocate or Luke's an advocate or you're a 29 year practitioner, we all need to support the beautiful profession of chiropractic. Totally. Or what it stands for is check and adjusting subluxations. Amen, brother. Amen. That's the core. D.D. Palmer said, you know, if you're doing something else in your office, it's great. D.D. Palmer said, let chiropractic be center stage. That was his. You know, this whole thing started you know, the split and challenges. I mean, this started right after Didi. I mean, you know, immediately after he started chiropractic, you know, he went out and they were making other schools in, uh, in, uh, in Illinois. And then, you know, they started to split. And then when BJ came along, there was a lot, you know, a lot more splitting that was happening then, unfortunately. And, uh, it just got out of hand, you know, unfortunately. So, uh, uh hopefully we've got a generation or two here. We can bring them back together. Well, you would ask, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, we're just kicking ass. That's all I can tell you. And uh, yeah. having you a part of what we're we're accomplishing together, we're stronger together than we are by ourselves. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. My mentor, my mentor Ed Osborne says, "We're all more alike than we are different." 
Totally. 99%. I mean, if you bring us all in a room, 99% of it is the same. You know, you're going to differ on 1%. And even that 1%, you know, easily can be resolved or certainly walk out with a mutual respect uh, for each other with a better understanding. But we got to start talking to each other, not talking, you know, at each other. So Yeah, too many doctors are running on parasympathetic. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You asked me what would um, – how the profession, I think, of chiropractic philosophy was adopted. You know, this is one of the things I think about a lot. And, and you know, again, I think the profession got it wrong. I think one that we, na- we label chiropractic philosophy as chiropractic philosophy, you know, I, I just, like, it's the, it's the um, theory of relativity. It's not Einstein. Uh, theory. It's the theory of relativity that was discovered by Einstein. So I think if we have, you know, the, the philosophy of life, right, maybe discovered by a chiropractor, I think number one, it's not chiropractic philosophy. It is the philosophy of life, right? So one, I think by labeling it, you create this separatism, which has created a difficult time because, hey, read this book. It's on chiropractic philosophy. No, no, no. It's on philosophy right? It just happened to be discovered by Dee Dee Palmer. So I, I think that's number one. Number two is if you start reading that philosophy, it is so beyond, you know, anything to do with subluxation. It's, it's, it's really about understanding there's a design, there's an intention, there's an objective, there's a purpose and purpose-driven life, right? So when you start looking at all that, boy, the appreciation you have for a human life, uh, another individual, how are you going to communicate to somebody? You know, if that energy is infinite uh, and it's intelligent, how are you going to treat the world? How are you going to treat future generations? How are you going to treat the profession that honors that? Like the, the ramifications of that are so much larger and broader if we could really fully adopt the principle. You know, sometimes you talk about the principle and you got other docs out there, critics that say, well, you're a BJ, BJ worshiper. Like that's literally like saying, oh, you keep talking about the theory of relativity. What are you, you're, what are you, a fucking Einstein worshiper? Like, no, I don't worship Einstein. He just came up with an awesome discovery. So, so I don't worship BJ or DD. They just, they discovered something that's awesome and phenomenal that is reproducible and philosophically, metaphysically, and scientifically sound that science is finally starting to catch up with. So just because I, I honor that doesn't mean I'm worshiping somebody in some dogma. What it means is I can recognize something that's awesome and I can appreciate the human being, not perfect person, per, but a human being that discovered it and that fostered it and brought it forth to the world. So, so I think the, 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 the profound effect of the appreciation and expansion of a chiropractic philosophy is world changing. It's just a matter of us, uh, of embracing it for what it is. So, so we're going to talk about you personally a little bit now. Okay. What kind of podcasts do you like to listen to? If any, are you in the middle of any good books and what are some of your hobbies? Yeah. Um, so what type of podcast I am, I love biographies. And um, I love listening and learning about other people. So one of the ones, uh, uh, books that I read all the time, Napoleon Hill is probably my go-to guy, um, Law Success, uh, Think and Grow Rich. He wrote a great book, Outwitting the Devil, probably one of my favorite Napoleon Hill books, just phenomenal. It was released later because of the name. Um, but that's a, that's a great book. The Alchemist, phenomenal book, Um, you know, learning basically life is just like the study of alchemy that you have to master certain tasks and bring everything you learn together. I love the line in there where he says, uh, you know, uh, everything that happens is for the betterment of the soul of the world. Um, Podcasts, I'll watch a lot of biographies and I love, I love, um, I'm a little bit of a geek or a big geek. I watch uh, everything that has to do with science. I mean, the idea of CERN breaking apart, you know, protons and neutrons and breaking things apart to smaller fragments. I just, it goes into what Dee Dee Palmer talked about, you know, 
universal intelligence. You know, my, my addition, which I gave a lecture a while ago, and somebody from one of the colleges said, oh, my God, you're like, you're brilliant. You know, and I was like, well, you know, finally somebody recognized that. So, but, uh, um, but, cause I'm not, but when, when you look at Einstein's formula of E equals MC squared, what I would do is I would add DD D. Palmer to that. And I would add the letter I in parentheses. And I would say it's intelligent energy because energy almost sounds like it's this ambiguous static electricity that doesn't have any shape, form, or intention. And if you look at it with intelligent energy, you realize that the energy is intelligent and it has parameters, it has criteria. The Big Bang could never have occurred if something didn't reach a critical moment. And if it reached a critical moment, that would have meant there was already inherent, um, if you will, priorities or properties within the energy that would have had to reach a certain amount of gravity, a certain amount of heat, whatever, that would have caused it to expand. So if you look at all that, and then you look at what CERN's doing, and you look at what the science and metaphysics are doing, they're all going back not only to Max Planck, who basically said what D.D. Palmer said in his, in his uh, Nobel Prize uh, uh, comments when he, when he was awarded the Nobel Prize. D.D. Palmer should have been awarded the Nobel Prize. But... When you go back to that, you realize all the stuff that D.D. Palmer said was, was right on, spot on, brilliant. And then when you take that to where we're going as far as life goes and understanding mental impulse, where does the mental impulse come by? Like when you ask somebody like, hey, you know, I ask people on my Monday night, open and close your hand. How can you do that? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that you can do this. And we don't even think about it. And while I'm doing this, what I ate for lunch today is being converted into living flesh, eye, hair, skin, liver, kidney. What directs that? How does it know how to do that? And if it's the nervous system and the nervous system can communicate to the body better, wouldn't you want to see a practitioner that allows more life to be expressed in the body? Yeah. Guess what? That's what I do as a chiropractor. So, so the reality is that philosophy, the science, the metaphysics, honoring the people that came before us watching podcasts, reading books that support, like Albert Hubbard, who was B.J. Palmer's mentor, you know, reading about what he taught B.J. and reading the great works of art that he taught and other great literates and, you know, Marcus Aurelius. I mean, man, read Alexander the Great. Holy Christ, you read these leaders. They are life, mind-bending, changing. And like Steve Jobs said, no one out there smarter than you and that's what he realized right at the end of his life. Well, I just realized no one out there is really smarter than me. And there, therefore, I have a huge amount of value to offer. And go out and dent the universe. Bend it up. Change its shape a little bit more by your existence. Because that's why God made you. God made you to, to make a difference. God doesn't make crap. You know, God made, spent 14 billion years on making you right now in the crucible of life. Make it worth something. So... So what are some websites and links you can give people if they wanted to find out more about you or your coaching program or anything else you're doing? Yeah, um, uh, chiropassionconsultingalloneword.com. Uh, that's our website. Um, a couple of things we've got are we've got a Facebook page, Chiropassion Consulting page. I post an enormous amount on Joe Borio, my page. I do a video once, uh, typically once a week um, that tells a story and relates it to chiropractic. Um, and we got a YouTube channel, Chiro Passion uh, Consulting YouTube. Um, so I give away a lot of stuff, help you communicate a little bit better, give you some good analogies to use. Uh, and that'll pretty much teach you who I am and what I'm about. And if you like it and we resonate with you, uh, we're 100 strong in Chiro Passion uh, with docs in our group. And uh, we're not the you know, biggest program out there, but I certainly think we're one of the best. And, uh, and if, if what I say resonates with you, then you know, uh, we'd be a great group for you to be part of, no doubt. So, Well, Dr. Joe, my jaw hurts from smiling. I haven't <laughs> smiled this much on an episode yet. Well, good. We've reached pretty much the end of this episode. Do you have any uh, closing remarks or final words? Yeah, I think um, reminding yourself every day when you start your office, number one, nobody gets it. Um, be better at keeping them, you know, be great at getting them, but be, but I'm sorry, be good at getting them, but be great at keeping them. I think we forget that. 
you know, where we see so much out there where docs are promoting all the stuff in Facebook and marketing. And I'm not saying not to do that, but we're, we're, we're running revolving door practices. You know, the miracle's not going to happen in 12 adjustments. It's going to happen in 60 or 100 or five years after care while you take care of somebody. So, so I think, you know, I really identifying the idea that chiropractic is something that's good for you and that needs to be done regularly throughout your lifetime and surrounding yourself with other docs and mentors and coaches that are going to teach you how to do that. I think that's my closing argument. That's my closing statement of what I would love to see uh, within this profession. Yeah. Well, Dr. Joe, I love you. Love you too, man. <laughs> and uh, you are passionate and uh, you have an, a uh, very appropriately named coaching system. There you go. They did it right. <laughs> and uh, just a, it's a thrill to have you on today. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I look forward to working with you more in the future and helping you with your uh, cause and uh, collaborating with you as we uh, both grow together. Absolutely. It's an honor, and I really appreciate that. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. All right, Dr. Joe, we want you to enjoy the rest of your afternoon, okay? Got it. ADIO, brother. See you later. We'll Love see down you. inside. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. See you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.